extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco at Moscone North for VMworld 2015. This is the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Cube alum Craig Nunez, VP at HP Storage. Welcome back to the Cube. Great to see you. Thanks. Great to be here. As always, my favorite part of VMworld. Sixth, sixth year at VMworld. Nice. And, uh, we were talking to Vish earlier. You know, three part at the time was a independent company, and we, it was at VMworld when yeah. we just sort of documented the, the, the bidding war. Yeah, right. It was between <laughs> Dell and HP, and we Crazy predicted days. You know, accurately HP would win. That wasn't a hard yeah, prediction. Know, we covered, remember the compelling, <laughs> then was on the scene, all that stuff's happening. <laughs> Craig, what's changed? I mean, obviously, the tweets have gone out. We put out a, a tweet as well. It's just, it's like a storage show. The joke is, it's storage world here. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, what's yeah, going absolutely. on, why? Well, I think the, uh, we are at a, crossroads, the industry, so the industry is always moving, right? We love that. But there's a, a, a tectonic shift going on right now with all that's changing, with you know, flash washing through the data center. Um, we have a really you know, interesting development with hyper-converged coming through for folks looking for that kind of agility. Um, and and the, the bottom line is, with so many new kinds of applications coming through, folks trying to power that digital economy, you know, they're, they're having to kind of, you know, stop buying the good enough storage that they maybe been buying for the last 10 years and kind of look around and figure it out. And, uh, you know, I think folks are rushing to kind of fill those new needs, those new gaps. And uh, that's what makes our industry and fun. And the DevOps thing is also powering this change. Absolutely. The application workloads yeah. are shifting the requirements on storage. And what specifically are you seeing there? The, I mean, for a lot of it is, is around the time to value <coughs> capability that you bring into uh, the, the data services, the storage uh, itself. And traditionally, for folks who've been involved in storage for years and years, not the strong suit of the storage infrastructure. Agility was not really in the same sentence. And so part of what's gone on, uh, I think, you know, starting with, with 3 par, we really built a platform for that virtualized data center bringing the agility that we're observing on the server side, um, you know, carrying that forward to really drive that kind of uh, time to value for, in fact, the old days, the DevOps guys working at the service providers doing cloud-based hosting. So bringing them a way to, you know, shrink, uh, book to bill, hey, uh, you know, I've got to fill this customer uh, deployment. What's the fastest way to get it there? Three par. And uh, um, that's very much a theme now that you know a DevOps world has gone mainstream. So three, three I always tell you, I still have the, S, the original three par S1, you know, on my <laughs> desk, all highlighted. You know, you pour through those things, and I mean, there was obviously a, a lot of great engineering, but there was some luck involved there because the theme at the time was all, all about service providers. You know, SNI, you remember storage oh, networks, yeah. right? And it was the, it was a craze that that was going to yeah. take over the world, and. And, the, and the, the S1 read like, hey, this is utility storage. We're, essentially, it didn't say it, but we are building this for the cloud. Right, and that's right. that's what you did. Yeah. A and, and it just well, was and the, a perfect you know, the, timing. The um, vision back then, which holds today, was you know, IT is going to become a utility and, mm -hmm. and only those with scale, whether it's a service provider or an advanced enterprise who's really got that kind of scale, is really going to be, you know, uh, at the end of the day, uh, got the scale to power at the lowest possible cost. And, you know, folks are in various stages of moving there, and we're seeing, you know, uh, adoption of these internal utilities, you know, call them private clouds, hybrid clouds today is the vernacular. We had different language uh, a few years ago, but I, I, uh, I mean, you, 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 like I say, you couldn't have nailed it better, and so you, you addressed a lot of the complexity problem. You know, we used to call it the click wars, and 3PAR yeah. was the yeah. gold standard of that. You really simplified, um, you know, the whole setup, deployment, installation, right. and obviously rich set of services. Yeah. And now we're entering this sort of new phase. You know, Flash is changing everything. Yeah. Yeah. You, got, you got cloud really happening now. It wasn't just sort of a bunch of marketing, you know, you know BS. Um, and so, 
the the pressure for agility is even greater. Yeah. Right? yeah. So how does an organization like HP with you know an architecture that's you know built in the 2000s, granted for the right you know market segment, how do you keep pace? Yeah. With the, with that so trend? here's here's the way I think about it because. Um, First of all, there are smart people everywhere. Smart people at HP, at EMC, at NetApp. I mean, they're in our industry is filled with smart people. They, the what kind of teases vendors apart is the architectural assets that they're bringing to market, and those assets um, enable those smart people to do some wonderful, wonderful things. And the and and by the way, I didn't come on today to talk about three bar, but I'm happy to do it because um, that platform was built to um, drive massive server consolidation. And in those days, it was these big, huge, you know, uh, uh, blade frame kind of devices, and VMware was still sitting on people's workstations. Right. <laughs> um, that, of course, moved to ESX, and you know, the world as we know it today, and, and, and that is even looking like it's going to move to a containerized, kind of workload, so you can see the, the trend, a platform built for massive server consolidation, keeping pace with kind of the trend on the, the, the front end. The back end built for, you know, massive um, uh, uh, parallelized workloads to try to get all you can out of every single drive, every IOP, and point it to a specific VM, right? And, and a, uh, you know, system built for that uh, actually is a system built for Flash as well, because think of what Flash is. Flash is just a massive ton of IOPS that you want to aim at a specific <laughs> workload, right? And so, um, you know, call it luck, call it, uh, I think, foresight by some of our smart uh, architects at 3PAR. Uh, yeah, that platform has really, you know, allowed HP to, to um, you know, take a, uh, a new found position in the market, number one, in mid-range fiber channel, uh, number two in all flash, and pretty darn close to probably number two overall storage uh, supplier in the industry. So uh, not a bad position. So yeah, you guys talking about these other trends, you talk about DevOps, you know, you got the sort of open source, open stack yeah. trend. Yeah. Um, you mentioned containers, containers in particular, uh, is, you know, that's a pretty big trend yeah. going on. A yeah. lot of momentum there for Doc Docker in particular, but others. Is there an affinity? What's it, what does it mean for storage? You know, that whole containerization, mental, virtualization meant a lot. Right. It still yeah. means a lot. This is, like John said, yeah. still a storage show. What does the container trend mean to storage? Will there be a greater affinity between the data repository and containers? I think, you know, we've got to see how it plays out because I think, uh, like VMware in the early days, there's there's an evolution ahead for um, you know containerized uh, applications. Um, I, I think, uh, simply put, storage is you know faced with yet another set of unpredictable workloads. What are those going to look like? I just figured out you know VMs and SQL Server, right? What is what is a container workload going to going to look like? And the platform simply has to be able to respond without somebody at the keyboard. Uh, otherwise, the whole business is going to be mired down in, you know, the, the um, you know, kind of behind IT, and that's the last thing we, we want. So the, the platform really has to handle those unpredictable workloads and deliver a predictable quality of service to every single app, uh, you know, Yes, okay, device. so if you're going to go from, you know, a handful to, tens of thousands, maybe even a hundred thousand yeah. containers, right. you got to keep the response time Absolutely. curve flat. Yeah. And so yeah. the, the infrastructure to do that has to, uh, I, mean, it has I would to think be, has to change from yeah, where we are today. Totally template driven. Um, in fact, you know, we thought a lot about this when we um, uh, developed our, you know, kind of our VVOL support, because that too was kind of going to raise by an order of magnitude the, yeah. you know, the, call it the clients, the, the uh, applications that you're supporting. And so everything has got to be automated, template-based, uh, otherwise you'll never get ahead of the, the wave of, of work coming at the What's your uh, take on the right? show? So drill down on your perspective on mm -hmm. the storage aspect. Why is it so hot? I want to revisit that because, and I want to I don't get what HP's doing because this is a, a big part of the, the choice message we're hearing. Yeah. The VMware ecosystem is not a, uh, 
homogeneous environment anymore. Certain layers, VMware has, we heard from Pat Gelsinger, yeah, yeah vMotion, stuff like that. But outside of that, it's a heterogeneous world. HP's always been multi-vendor. But what are you guys doing here in context of the ecosystem? Because it's a free-for-all right now. Yeah. On VMware, it's a lot of growth, a lot of install base, yeah. a lot of storage needs. What particular things are you guys innovating on? So the, the, uh, I think the big things that we're you know, very much in, call it education mode with uh, our customers and folks who aren't our customers. Uh, number one is Flash, because I think uh, we have seen uh, this you know, Flash innovation, and, and the, the premise I hold uh, really came true with Flash. Great innovations um, you know, really get kind of re-innovated a couple of times before they go mainstream. And Flash was you know, awesome for those app acceleration, revenue tied applications, but very niched out, right? And folks started to think, hey, I could bring this into my infrastructure if only I could bring you know, greater tier one capable data services. It would fit, I can do this. Um, and, and so we saw Flash kind of grow in that direction. And then the, I think the one that really, really uh, tipped it over was, that's great, but most of my apps are sitting on disk and that's you know, a cost per usable gig of X. Um, and when Flash hit that you know, buck fifty, two dollars per usable gig, bam! You know, we have folks driving towards this all yeah. Flash data center. So kind of that tip, tipping point was cost per Cost gig per usable gigabyte, which a lot of folks still think Flash is too expensive. Either they're talking to the wrong uh, vendor, uh, or you know they're they're kind of you know last time they looked it was yeah. too too pricey. Plummeting. So so that getting that education out. The other you know hot topic, and and you walk around the show floor, it's evident is hyperconvergence. I think everybody is is talking about it, whether they've got it or not. It's a different thing, and <laughs> it's where. Flash was two years ago, right? What's hot right now is an appliance, right? Um, a fixed building block for VMs, uh, uh, client desktops, whatever. The, but we know a great innovation is going to reinvent itself a couple of times. And, and what we're beginning to see when we talk to some of the, the more thoughtful enterprises is they, wanna, they want those data services captured within the appliance to stretch beyond the appliance, right, and be a part of their data center and help them solve problems like low cost replication, maybe with software on an x86 server, or you know, software running on bare metal hardware to just bring additional storage capacity to that hyper-converged appliance, to, to break out of that fixed building block mode. Um, and that is going to, you know, be like the tier one data services. It's going to it's going to increase the adoption, and and I believe what drives that stuff mainstream is when that those data services associated with hyper converged uh, uh, infrastructure really become u a ubiquitous data services across the data center with all that cool flash that's you know, powering your most important applications. When you have one set of data services across hyper-converged and, and flash-based systems, bam, you have a, a, a rational, coherent data center architecture that you can bet your business on. So and that so sounds like a renaissance in metadata management. It, absolutely. It occurs yeah. to, to make that happen, right? Absolutely, and, and it's, we all have to kind of uh, step back and not solve the point problem first but you know, solve it in the context of where we're taking our data center, right? Um, because uh, if we're kind of caught up solving point problems, we're going to wind up with silo after silo of n things that don't work together. Well, presumably that's a problem that a, a company like HP and, and the others that are, that are large have the resources to solve, uh, because generally startups are solving those point problems, or is that changing? I mean, what's your thought? Well, I think uh, in, in general terms, hyperconvergence is a great one because uh, that is a problem not just addressed by great uh, data services, it's, you know, it needs great management, it needs great uh, um, uh, dense hardware platforms, and if you think about a company like HP that brings a fantastic compute portfolio, it brings one view on the management side, it brings great storage technology, you know, there's no other company I can think of that really is bringing it together 
like HP and can really take it to where you know, it's capable of going. Craig, great to see you. Thanks, Thanks for coming on theCUBE and sharing yeah, my your pleasure. perspective. We've been here six years, as Dave said, and having you on theCUBE has been fantastic. Uh, always great insight. And again, Dave, storage is sexy. Again, <laughs> every year. Always, <laughs> baby. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> storage is sexy. And again, this show is dominated by storage because there's so much going on. Yeah. The capacity issues, the technology, the need for the big day that I'll see with virtualization, a lot of great stuff. Congratulations on all your success at HP Storage. We'll be back with more live in San Francisco from theCUBE here at VMworld 2015 after this short break. <laughs>